those songs was a blessing this morning, wasn't it? Amen. That's what we have to do. We got to hold on. We got to endure this thing to the end. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, let us uh, do what we're supposed to do and let us go and read the law. We're going to start this off this uh, afternoon in Exodus, the 20th chapter. Exodus 20th. And we're going to pick it up, and we're going to read verses 1 through 17, brothers and sisters. Okay, go ahead, my brother. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. All right, brothers and sisters, let us turn to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. And let us read verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. And we're going to read verses 13 and 14. Okay, brother, go ahead and read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil all right let's go here to revelations the 22nd chapter and we're going to read verses 14 through 15 revelations 22 verses 14 through 15 okay go ahead my brother Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. All right, brothers. So we read the law just like we was commanded, and how they done every Sabbath day with Moses and every, all the congregation. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you today's lesson is sin. What is it? I know a lot of us, we might know what it is, but I want to go around this way, and I want the new people that's here, if you don't understand what sin is, I want you to see this. Please write these scriptures down, see, because a lot of times when we read these things, a lot of people are not understanding what the Word of God is actually saying. And then I'm going to say, some are understanding what the word of God is saying. And they still are being what? Disobedient. So the name of the lesson is sin. What is it? And the wages of it. And by the way, I want to say one thing to you. Brother Julius was supposed to be here today. And uh, he couldn't make it. But he told me to tell everyone that he hoped to see you again. And he loved everyone. So I referred that message. I told him I will. So, hey, I didn't lie. Right. 
Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord, Amen. <laughs> so, because hey, we got to watch what we say, don't we? That's it. When we say something and agree to it, hey, we bound ourselves. But brothers and sisters, let's pick this up in Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. Let's go quickly to Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. See, because when we go through this, I, you, you know, I, I, I really, I know when I first came to the Israel of God, and I came out of the uh, Sunday church and everything, it was always just jumping and shouting, the music going. And I would see, and I was young when I started in church because my mother and father, them, they took me there. They tried to bring me up as they knew was the right way. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So the thing is, when I was there, I used to think the people in the church was righteous. I thought they did not sin. And I, you know, I was running around doing little stuff, and I thought I was just the worst, the worstest one of them all. How, 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 many, how many of you thought that when you was going to church and brought up in it, you thought everybody was righteous and, hey, but you know what, people? That's what it was supposed to be. That's what it was supposed to be. Everybody in that church, in that congregation, was supposed to be righteous. See, because I want to let you know on this journey today, brothers and sisters, see, this book, this word of God, is to the children of God. Amen? Amen. It's to the whole congregation. Remember when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. They, they was in Egypt, and they got a law, which was the Passover, right? That's right. And when they got that uh, Passover, the ordinance of that Passover said, take the blood of the lamb and do what? Strike it on the side of... That was faith. And whosoever did not do that, there was one dead in that house. Amen? Amen. And if you didn't do it, hey, the Lord didn't pass over your sin. See, so at that time, Israel did not even know the Lord, really. They was down in Egypt in bondage and doing things and going against God and everything. But, hey, Moses showed up, and the Lord told Moses, hey, I heard their cry. So when he heard their cry, hey, he promised this to who? Abraham. He said that your seed was going to be down into Egypt 400 and what? 30 years. 400 years of bondage, and it was 30 years of peace. Take that ringing out, man. 30 years of peace. And when our forefathers went down into Egypt, when it was a shortage and a famine, they went down there and it was peace because Joseph was there. And Joseph was second in command. He was an Israelite. And the Lord, hey, gave him favor with Pharaoh. Pharaoh put that ring on his finger and said, hey, you answer to nobody but who? Me. And see, when you obey and do what does say the Lord, people, that's what the Lord do. He give you favor. He give you favor with the king, with the queens. He give you favor with people in high places. He give you all that for the people that makes the laws. But you got to walk there in, people. But one thing that I saw when Israel came out and when the Lord even told, I'm talking this out because I wanted to read it, but it'll be so many scriptures. But I'm talking this out to you because when the whole children of Israel came out of Egypt and when the Lord told Moses about that tabernacle 
and he wanted him to make a tabernacle and everything, that tabernacle was in the midst of them, right? And he told them it was a tent. And then all the congregation, remember when Moses set that tent up and everything, and then it was a courtway. So just say like, that's the tabernacle right there where the chair. And all this right here, this space and stuff was up here. Hey, that was the courts. Okay? And all the courts. And then behind that was what? All the congregation going around in a circle. You understand it? And when they was going, hey, but that was the congregation. And they were in their tents. And when Israel done so wickedly and done so bad, the Lord said, I got to get up, Moses. I got to get up out of here because, hey, they are a stiff neck. They hard head. They rebellious. And they will not listen. But the Lord, I'm going to sum it up. He gave them all their statutes and law, his statutes and laws, for them to obey. And they would not do it, people. What's wrong with us, Israel? Well, we can't do what does say the Lord our God. But what I notice when the Lord say, Moses, take this tabernacle outside the camp. But let me reel that back in. Let me reel that back in because I skipped a little part. But when the Lord told Moses to tell them when they had their paddle on their side and everything, and they wept, he said, when, they, when you get ready to relieve yourself, you go outside the camp. Okay? And when you go outside the camp, that when you relieve yourself, you cover that back up. So when he, he had you to cover, because the Lord was walking in the midst of the camp. That's right. Remember, he was coming out the tabernacle. Right. You couldn't see him, but he was walking through the camp. And when he was looking and he saw something unclean, he wasn't just talking about no bowel movement. That's right. Bro. You understand? What he was talking about, see, because when he was going to all them tents and looking, hey, was somebody committing adultery in their tent? He was talking about uncleanness. What's uncleanness? What make you unclean? Sin. So if somebody stole something, didn't they steal the Babylon garments? With, and he put it in under his tent. And the Lord said, hey, I can't walk, I can't walk with you, Israel. So the Lord, hey, the Lord was walking in the midst of the camp, people. So when he saw, hey, it wasn't just relieving, it was unclean, it was sin. Are you going to obey? Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. Hey, have you got a, a false idol in that tent? You wind down to, and the Lord said, hey, hey, Moses, somebody over there in that tent, bind down to an idol. Mm -hmm. Are you, I'm setting this up for you. But the thing is, so now the Lord told them since they were stiff necked and hard headed because the Lord wanted to kill them. So he said, move the tabernacle outside the camp. Okay? He said, who want to come, let them do what? Come outside the camp. Because therefore he that broke on the people. Remember, all these people, they were baptized unto the Lord. When they came to the Red Sea. Amen? Amen That's bro. 2 Corinthians, isn't it? Yeah. We know that. That's 2 Corinthians. So we know, we, we know this. The Israel of God has taught you people and taught you how to walk to the Lord your God. So, every time Moses went to the tent, when they saw that cloud come down Israel, they knew the Lord had came. So every man stood in his tent, and they was looking. And when they saw Moses going to the tabernacle, up to the door, then everybody fell down and started doing what? Worshiping God. This is the way we were supposed to. This you see how close we was to our God? But 
But you mean we can't go through a little nothing? <laughs> Let's pick this up in Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter. And let's pick this up at verse 20, because this is when I start seeing. I say, man, wait a minute now. Hold on. Let's, what is this? What's so about this sin? Because like I said, when I was little and I was in the church, Sunday church, I thought everybody was right. right. Until my mama pulled me one day and say, boy, the biggest <laughs> devil's in here. Right. Everybody ain't for your good. Stop telling folk to pray for you. Because right. you'll get somebody to pray for you and say, hey, Lord, kill them. You don't know what nobody's saying about you. You understand what I'm saying, people? But let's read. Let's read what this book say. Because we ain't going to add and we're not going to take away. We're going to go and see what, what say the book, which is the holy word or who? God. Okay, come on. Ecclesiastes 7, and let's pick this up at verse 20. What does it say, my brother? For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> so now we know this. All the way from Abraham, Moses, everybody. There's not a good man that has not sinned. Everybody in sin, people. You understand? Yes, sir. And this is what, hey, Abraham, our forefather, what was he at? He was in sin. Wasn't his father an idol maker? Mm -hmm. Okay. Skip down to verse 25. What does it say? I applied my heart to know. See, this is what Solomon said. I applied my heart. So this is what I've done. I applied my heart to do what, brother? To know. Uh-huh. And to search and to seek out wisdom. And to seek out wisdom and what else? The reason of things. And the reason of things. Why? Okay, because I thought everybody was righteous. Go ahead and finish that out for me. And to know the wickedness of folly. Uh-huh. Even of foolishness and madness. Yes, sir. So, hey, I wanted to know all this. So, skip down to verse 27, and let's continue. What does it say, my brother? Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher. Uh-huh. Counting one by one to find out the account. To find out the account. I said, oh, okay. So, let's pick this up in Job. Let's go to Job, y'all. Let's go to Job, the first chapter. Because this is what I saw. I said, whoa, okay. Job is a tower of wisdom, right, y'all? Mm -hmm. Hey, but... I, when I read this, I said, uh. But one thing I want to tell y'all is you know a lot of people, we read this Bible, and a lot of people don't understand. They think that just God come down and just talk to the people. <laughs> but he said he visited them in dreams. Only one talked to him face to face was who? Moses and Abraham and all of them. But he visited them in dreams. You understand what I'm saying? But this is what I saw. I said, okay, because I remember Job didn't know that God and Satan had a conversation about him. Do y'all understand that? Right. And that's the same way. You don't know if God and Satan had a conversation about you. Mm. Bring it out, bro. Yes, sir. Do you understand? See, the Lord banking on some of y'all. Hmm. And say, hey, man, go on, say, go on, do, but you can't kill him. You understand what I'm saying? But when I read this, I said, okay, go pick this up at verse 1, brother. Verse 1, what does it say? There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect. He, whoa, shut yes. your mouth. Yeah, it was perfect. I thought ain't no perfect people here. Job was perfect <laughs> and upright. But see... We reading this book, right? All together. <laughs> Go ahead. He say, and he was perfect. And what else, brother? Upright. Uh-huh. And one that feared God and eschewed evil. Oh, okay. Now let's skip down to verse 6. What does this say? 
Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Right. This this conversation that God and Satan had about Job. But Job, hey, he wasn't in the conversation. He didn't know. Okay? That's right. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Uh-huh. Go and, ahead. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Wait a minute. Who said that? The Lord said it. The Lord the said it. <laughs> Go ahead. Hast thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth? <laughs> there is none. Do you understand what none is? Uh, ain't that, what's that? <laughs> Do, do I need to write it up on the board? I know you know. Zero from zero is what? Zero. That's none. <laughs> no one, right? Not one. Okay. Okay. Let's pay attention. Go ahead. A perfect and an upright man, one that fear of God and eschews evil. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? And that's why I said, whoa, okay. So the Lord said that Job was perfect and an upright man, right? But let's go see something. Let's go here to Job, the seventh chapter. When I saw this, I almost fell out of my seat. <laughs> Job 7, and we're going to get straight to the matter. Verse 20, what does it say, my brother? I have sinned. <laughs> what did Job do? Sinned. I said, no, you didn't, Job. <laughs> I said, the, the Lord just said you was perfect and you was upright. Mm -hmm. But Job said, I have sinned. Now, see, that makes number seven, Ecclesiastes 7 chapter, to be true, right? Yeah, it does. So ain't no, hey, from Abraham, from Adam, all the way to all the prophets, ain't nobody perfect. So when I saw this about Job, I said, what? What, Job? No, you didn't. Because after I kept reading the book, I heard when Job said he kept his integrity and all of this, I said, man. But, but come on, let no. Let's not just trip over that a little bit. I just wanted to show you that Job, he did what, people? Sin. Sin. Go ahead. What shall I do unto thee, O thou preserver of men? Uh, so he said, what shall I do with thee, O preserver of men? This is the Lord now. He, listen to what the Lord been to say. But this Job talking to him. That's right. Go ahead and read. Why hast thou set me as a mark against thee? <laughs> Why have you set what me as a mark against thee? So that I am a burden to myself. For I am what? See, because there it go right here, people. When you sin, see, look, when you come into this thing, you go and you say, Lord, I'm going to do what you say. You say, I want to be baptized now. Oh, we tell you, don't go jumping in. Hmm. And what do we call it? <laughs> don't go, don't go jump in that suicide tank, cause you fit a, now you fit to make a covenant, now you fit to make an oath, now you fit a promise to the Lord, now you fit to mess yourself up. <laughs> Come on, bro. Twenty-one. Uh huh. And why dost thou not pardon my transgression? And see, <laughs> see, because. This whole thing, listen, so he said, why you make a mark out of me, right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, and you burden me, right? right? Why? See, God, you ain't hurting God. You hurting yourself. 
So every time that you go and sin and you do what does say the Lord, don't do what does say the Lord, hey, you burn yourself. You get a, a you get ready to get a big whooping. I want to say something else. You, you, you get ready to have a, get a big bat upside your head. And that ain't good from the Lord. Amen? Amen. Okay. Did we finish that? No, sir. Go ahead. Mid-21. Excuse me. I'll Start back. back at 21. And why dost thou not pardon my transgression and take away my iniquity? Uh-huh. For now shall I sleep in the dust, and thou shalt seek me in the morning, but I shall not be. Yes, sir. See, because this is when we sin, brother. See, that's why all this death and stuff. Because when we come to find out what sin is, and I read, we got it in the lesson, but I come to find out the wages of sin is what, people? Death. It's death. So who you hurting? Yourself. <laughs> Y'all got the message. Let's go here to Proverbs, the eighth chapter. See, so when you do these things, see, and this is what I see people do. I see people do it. Man, hey, I, I, you know, I, you, you act like you can't even work problems out in your houses. You act like you can't even work problems out among yourselves. And some of us, we just give up. We throw our hands up. But what is the Lord saying? When you stood there before the Lord, when you found out, when you found him, you, you were so in love, wasn't you? But remember who you put in it. Who did you put in it? You put the Lord in it. Oh, I'm a do, baby. <laughs> I know when my son got married, a lot of brothers laughed, say, man, gee, you crazy, man. I said, no, I told him, hey, man, hey, have a nice life. I didn't mean nothing by it. I just told him, have a nice life, brother. Because now what you are done, hey, you are entered in a covenant. Between you and your wife and who? Lord. Right there in the midst. Now obey, bro. Don't come to me crying. I'm your daddy. I brought you up and I told you what to do. And when you disobey me, you disobey the Lord. So then when you come cry to me, son, uh, daddy, you told me. I don't want to hear it. Because you got to stand up, all of us men, and be what? A man. <laughs> and our little women, they don't like stuff. They don't want to hear, but sister, hey, you hurt yourself too. Because when it said, I do, what you say? I do. You real, you was in your shiny dress, <laughs> had your nails, couldn't nobody tell you nothing. You ain't messing my day up. No, we ain't going to mess your day up because that's that day of, of you and the Lord <laughs> and your husband. Covenant day. <laughs> Proverbs 8, man. Proverbs 8, and we're going to read one verse. Proverbs 8 and verse 36. What does it say? But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Do you see that, brothers and sisters? So you ain't hurting the Lord on nothing you do. You hurting yourself, people, when you disobey the Lord. Now do you see why the Lord said, I got to get away from around these people? Let's go here to Psalms 130. Huh? Did you finish it out? No, sir. Okay, well, finish it for me. All they that hate me love death. 
You see that? Matter of fact, I, I'm sorry. Let's read that over one more time because okay. I rushed there. Yes, sir. Let me let this get a little season in the pot for him and yes, stir sir. it up. Yes, sir. Read it one more time, brother. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. Uh huh. All they that hate me love death. So you see that, people? And see, we're going to find out about that death. It ain't the first death where you're going to go in the grave. It's talking about the second one. That's right. Where he's going to wake you up and remind you what you've done. Because, hey, he say all things are done what is written well. It's, it's written in a book. book. Mm -hmm. And then he got another book to just, hey, look, man, everything we saying and what we doing, listen, it's being recorded, people. Why are you playing with yourself? I just, look, I'm talking to me too. I ain't exempt from this thing. Psalms 130. Turn quickly. Psalms 130. And let's pick this up at verse 3. Psalms 130. Because Job asked this question, why you mocked me, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Psalms 130. And pick it up at verse 3. What does it say? If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? <laughs> That's the question. See, because, listen, when the Lord told Moses, I want to kill them all, believe me, when you sin, he want to kill you. But if he, if he judged you right now for everything, well, we're not, all of us will be dead. Man. When man. nobody be, because I read, ain't no man on the earth and sin is not. Then you read it with me. So that means all of us, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Four. But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Oh, so I said, here it go. Here it go right here. But the Lord will forgive you. See, that's the mercy. But see, when you find out what you're doing and you went too far, you need to turn back. Huh. Father, you need to go to your secret. You ain't got to go tell nobody. Go in your secret and play. pray. Get back to him. Real quick, fast, in a hurry. Yeah, I know that's right. Let's go here. To Psalms 34. Turn to Psalms 34. Back up. Psalms 34. See, because like I said, brothers and sisters, we don't know. Can't nobody. One. If, uh, this aisle. This aisle. This aisle. This aisle. Can't nobody talk about nobody in here. That's right, bro. Not a one. You understand? Yes, sir. See, because I didn't ask y'all before, when everyone that went and got in that suicide tank and that baptismal tank, and you baptized, you got up new in Christ Jesus, that old man supposed to die, right? That's right. But a lot of you got up, and he followed you around. Right. He came out of there, too. When you sit, he sit. Right next to you. <laughs> when you go, he go. He following you, people. You got to keep him what? Dead. You got to do these things. Psalms 34, verse 16. What does it say, my brother? The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. <laughs> See, so let that be known. People, stop playing with yourself. Stop playing with this word. Stop playing with your spouse. Stop playing with your husband. 
And the ones that's not married, stop playing with yourself. And stop committing adultery on your husband. Well, I thought I thought I wasn't married. Yeah, you married to Christ. Because when you got in that wife, you married him. And everything that your husband doing, you doing this. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and you cherry picking what you want. Don't work like that. Read that one more time. What does the Lord say? The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Yes, sir. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Go ahead. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Hey, didn't we have a big storm here last night? Yeah, we did. <laughs> a lot of folk were scared. I wasn't. I was in there doing it lesson. Boom, the lights flicker. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> I said, Lord, don't let them lights cut off because I got to finish this lesson. <laughs> they didn't cut off either. This is what the righteous do. When we do something, hey, brothers and sisters, that's why when I do something wrong, hey, man, I'm crying to my God. But it said when the righteous cry, don't it? That's right, bro. Huh? Yeah. I ain't calling myself righteous. I'm saying what the book say because I'm trying to get to the Lord. I don't know if I'm righteous or not yet. I don't know if I'm going to make it in the kingdom. I don't know if I'm going to make it there either because I had done some things. When I came at the water and knew it, but one thing, I ain't wallowing in it. I got up. I said, Lord, if you forgive me, please don't take your spirit from me. Keep your word. Keep me endowed with the truth, Lord. Let me glorify thee in front of man. And let me teach thy people. That's what I am praying. So I got to endure this thing to the end, people. No matter what nobody say, no matter what they, how they look, I don't care. I've been cursed out. I've been done. Hey, all of this. Everything that the Lord has said in this book, it has happened, pretty much happened to me. I don't know about nobody else, but you better stand. Come on. Where we at? 18. Go ahead. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save of such as be of a contrite spirit. See, that's where the Lord come in. He listened to you. See, you can sin, you can sin, you can sin, you can sin, and you don't know the Lord. But a lot of folk out there sinning, and they doing everything under the sun, but when something happens, what they do? Lord. Right. Crying to oh, God. Oh, Lord, please. Ooh, but the Lord don't hear you. He do not hear you, people. I told one man that in the barbershop, he said, you mean, you, you going to sit here and tell me the Lord don't hear me? I said, he don't hear you, bro. And then when I let him read it, the Lord hear not a sinner's prayer. I said, so what that say? Man, I don't care what they say. I know the Lord. <laughs> what? You still, gonna, you still being rebellious. That's the problem. <laughs> say, of a contrite, he say, the Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and, a, and save it such as be of a contrite right spirit. spirit. So, brother and sister, that means you sorrowful. For what you have done. You don't, you can't sleep. You come with tossing and turning. That's why you burdened. Why you crying? Why, why you ain't moving right? Huh? Because you burdened that sin and came on you. I ain't seen brothers and sisters here when they had and then done something and they came, bro, God, what's wrong? I say, tell it to the Lord. <clears throat> tell it to the Lord. Because I'm mere man, what? Myself. I'm telling y'all, but I can't save nobody but brother God. That's right, bro. Y'all understand that? 
your salvation, hey, it relies on you. You got to keep your soul. You got to keep yourself. When you see yourself going too far to the left, check yourself. Where we at? 19. Finish it. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. You see that? So whatever kind of affliction, whatever come up on you people, guess what? The Lord will get you out of it. If you got a nagging woman and your woman keep lying on you and saying you doing this and you doing that, all you got to do, keep serving the Lord. The, not, the Lord is not going to let his servant be beat up. You understand? You'll go through a little. But then when you ain't doing what you're supposed to, hey, and, and lies are going on, and you lying on your partner, and you doing this, the Lord going to get you. The Lord going to remove somebody. Didn't he say he removed the wicked from the earth? See, this stuff got to fall on somebody's head, but don't let it be on yours, righteous. See, so when I saw this, hey, the face of the Lord is against all them that do evil. And then, so I said, okay, so I saw that Job had sinned. He told, he told me out of his mouth he sinned. How did he tell me out of his mouth? We just read it, didn't we? Okay. I say, okay. Now let's go read here about Jesus. So I want to say this right here. People say smoking and drinking is a sin, right? But this is what I told a whole a old big sanctified woman. She told me. She said, you know, talking to me in the doctor's office, a nurse. And she said, so I said, well, let, let, let's go read this. I said, the first miracle that Jesus done, Jesus made turn water turn into, into wine. what? Wine. <laughs> I ain't say no grapefruit juice. Right. <laughs> I ain't say no grape juice. I said wine. I said wine. W-I-N-E. And what is wine? Wine is fermented grapes. So we know that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got about 16 to percent of alcohol. Some got 20. Hey, but it'll get you lit. <laughs> You'll be doing like Noel. Got naked in the tent and laid out. <laughs> He did it, didn't he? <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, Y'all looking at me crazy, but he, hey, the Lord said you can do these things, but don't what? Overindulge. Right. Don't get drunk. Right. Moderation. <clears throat> come on. Come on. Let, let's go read this. Let's go to St. John, the second chapter. See, because when I saw, and I told that lady, I said, well, you know, Jesus drunk wine. My, my, my God ain't drunk no wine. <laughs> I said, whoa, whoa, sister. I say, I say, you, you, you sure about that? You know, I didn't, you know, when I be witness, I don't be, be clowning with them. I say, are you sure about that, sister? She said, yeah, my God ain't drunk no wine. I said, oh, okay. And I got what you said. <clears throat> Yo, God. Yo, God, right. I got it. I said, but let's go, can I read something to you? Yeah, you can read it to me. I said, let's go read this right here. We went to St. John, like we in now, the second chapter. Let's pick it up at verse 1. St. John, because Jesus, hey, it wasn't his time yet, but hey, they was invited to a wedding, y'all. Mm -hmm. And let's see, this is the very first miracle that Jesus done. But go ahead, brother. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Uh huh. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, 
woman, what have I to do with thee? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> like, really, what I got to do with that? Because they ain't got no wine. Right. <clears throat> you know? But go ahead and read. Mine hour is not yet come. Uh-huh. His mother saith unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots. See, because I'm going to say this here. Mary, the angel visited Mary and told her she was going to have a son and he was going to save his people from their sins. And she knew who he was. And he knew. But he, you, you got to remember something. Jesus don't never break protocol. He had to wait till he was at the age of accountability. Now, when he was 12 years old, what was he doing? He was up in the synagogue. He was, no, what you say? He teaching. But, hey, he couldn't do the ministry, really. The ministry. Mom and dad of them left. That's something. They left now and turned around. What, what Jesus did? And they go back, and where was he at? Teaching. And, well, not teach, answering questions. Right. Hard <laughs> questions. <laughs> But let's finish this. Go ahead, bro. Six. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the, when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, uh -huh. and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. You see that? <laughs> right. You see that, people? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, man, you, Jesus did this now. Go read that next verse. What does it say? This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. Now, Jesus is supposed to be the Christ, right? That's right. The anointed one. So I guess he sinned, didn't he? This is his first miracle, and he sinned. Mm -hmm. But I, no, no, no. Because they said that he was a man without sin. Ain't that what the book say? That's right. He was the holy one of Israel. Not the tainted one of Israel. Right. The holy one of Israel. Come on. Let's go finish reading. Let's go here to Luke the seventh chapter. Turn over to Luke the seventh chapter. So when I showed her that, she said, I gotta go back and look at that. I said, Yeah, I know I I, I thought so. <clears throat> but your but your God, you talking about, and I say, but his name Jesus, I say, Jesus did drink. But let's go read this. Luke 7 and verse 33. What does it say? Luke 7 and verse 33. Go ahead when you get it, brother. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. Now, you see this? Now, John the Baptist, hey, supposed to be Jesus' cousin, right? All right. So he came neither eating bread and, they say, and drinking, but they say he had a devil. So he, the reason I'm taking you here to see, to mm -hmm. show you this first miracle Whatever you do for the Lord, brothers and sisters, if you write, they're going to talk about you. They're going to call you a devil. They're going to call you everything else but the child of God. But you stay there. Go ahead and let's finish this up, brother. End of 33. Uh-huh. And ye say, he hath the devil. Uh-huh. The son of man is come eating and drinking. And ye say, behold, a gluttonous man... And a wine bibber. Oh, they call Jesus a what? A drunk, people. Mm -hmm. But your God wasn't no drunk. <clears throat> but listen what it say. He was a, a gluttonous man, a wine bibber, a what? Friend of publicans and sinners. Yes, sir. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Yes, sir. Let's go here to St. John, the third chapter. St. John 3. Now, I'm sorry, 1 John. Let's go here to 1 John, the third chapter. So I said, okay, so Jesus didn't sin. What is sin? 
We're going to read it. Didn't want you to blabber that out. <laughs> Close your mouth and let me teach my lesson. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> First John, the third chapter, and we're going to read one verse. First John, the third <laughs> chapter, and we're going to read verse four. What does it say, my brother? Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Now, do you understand why the Lord was mad at Israel people when he called them a stiff neck? A rebellious people? Because he gave them his commandment. And the commandment is the law. He gave them the dietary. He gave them all these good ordinances and told them to walk their end. But they could not even do it, people. And then people will tell you today, you know, you can't do them. You can't do them command. You can't do that stuff. Don't you let nobody. Hey, that was Satan talking to you. It was a person standing up there. But the Lord said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Calories. That was Satan talking out of them. When some come at you that's not a Lord, that's not correct, it's Satan talking to you through them people. It's spirits on people, people. That's right. 